Hello, this is Modified Darvis Box with a quick video here today on Sunday, March 14th. I had a lot I wanted to say again this week uh, because we had such a, a crazy uh, week in the market, so I thought I'd make a quick video. All right, let's get into it. Uh, about me, 23 years experience, first trade in 95, traded during the internet bubble, 1998-2000. Uh, Great time, but I didn't quite know what I was doing. But I made some money, so that's all right. Um, adopt, started adopting strategies, uh, adopted the cancel strategy, 2003. Uh, had my first giant winner in 2004. So there's something to be said about having a strategy. And what's cool is, is that uh, you know, I learned you can make big money investing in stocks um, back then. I think it's important to realize that. Uh, but then the global financial crisis years in 2008 um, really showed that, yeah, you can, you can lose a lot of money. So the point became, you know, come up with a system to make money and then also a system to keep the money. Um, I transitioned to the Darvis method in 2013 based on the book, How I Made $2 million in the Market by Nicholas Darvis. Uh, basically, I was looking for a consistent process that I could apply to every stock idea um, that came along. Uh, what is the Darvis box method? Well, again, it's from the book, How I Made Two Million in the Stock Market. Uh, basically, only three states of trend exist. There's uptrends, downtrends, and sideways trends. And what I'm looking to do is transact when the trend changes. Uh, in this slide, there's a couple of examples of bullish and bearish Darvis box patterns. I try and buy the bullish ones, and when the bearish ones happen, I take note of them, but I don't really do anything about it. Um, you can short them, but you know, it, it, buying them is, is just so much easier. Um, so I just step aside when the bearish ones occur. Um, the, my particular modified Darvis box method is I use weekly charts. Um, I'm, I'm looking for big volume to identify trend changes. I think big volume is one of the most important things to look for. Um, but I also use fundamentals, uh, like, like keeping an eye on sales and earnings, uh, as those are both very important as well. Darvis called himself a techno fundamentalist, and I completely agree with that. I think you need to look at both, and when you combine the two, it can be very powerful. Uh, I've added new techniques the last couple of years, incorporating moving averages and volume scanners. And the tools we have today are just so amazing. So the trick is really learning how to use all the tools that are available. But the good news is that the general principles are pretty much unchanged. So uh, with that, you know, that's enough about me. Let's get into the charts. Uh, and actually, before we get into some charts, I wanted to show you this S&P 500 index information. This information is available for free on the S&P 500 website. And basically, they've updated it uh, as of March 11th. And we can see that they're now doing a couple years forward as to what estimates are. And the good news is the estimates look great. Uh, American companies are just printing money hand over fist. They're very profitable. And that bodes well for stock prices and the index itself. The American economy is strong. Basically, that's what this is telling me. Uh, the one question is, okay, how much are investors going to pay for that earnings stream? On a trailing PE basis, you can see, you know, where things stand right now, potentially. You can look at it also as a forward PE, forward looking. When you use that, the index looks almost downright cheap based on the level of earnings you're going to get. At the top, I include my interpretation of PE levels and what corresponds to what? The Great Depression bottomed out at roughly an 8 PE. Historically, bubble markets, uh, the delineation is about 24, 25. So you can see we're kind of in what I consider a strong market. On the edge of bubble, but if the powers that be keep everything under control, there's no reason why we can't go a lot higher. Okay, let's look at some charts. Uh, so the indexes kind of reflect this earnings outlook. The strongest index is the IWM, the Russell 2000. 
the last few weeks was a pretty vicious sell-off. And the Russells, no exception, look, they were throwing their shares away. But what's kind of funny is after three weeks of selling, whoop, <laughs> we're back to new highs on the Russell. And it's actually a Darvis box breakout on big green volume. So these guys got shake and bait and threw away probably some great IWM positions. Hey, everybody makes mistakes, including the big guys. The S&P 500, like we just showed, has some pretty good earnings coming. Well, guess what? That one weathered the storm pretty well. And now, this week it closed, yep, with a Darvis box breakout on big green volume. What the chart also shows is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is a laggard. Stay away from tech. That's the message I'm getting from this. Now, we all want to buy tech companies. Tech companies are cool. They're sexy. But, you know, this just says that they're all laggards. And let's be honest. Tech companies are overvalued a bit or overowned, whatever you want to call them, whatever metric you use. But the chart doesn't lag. The NASDAQ is kind of far from the top edge of its box. And in comparison to the other two indexes, is a laggard. So go with the strong ones, not the weak ones. Uh, what One interesting type of index look is equal weighted indexes. Here's the RSP, which is an equal weight S&P 500 ETF. This is really interesting because the RSP basically doesn't even register the last few weeks of selling. In fact, it's traded up to new highs, doesn't even have a box, didn't even go sideways. The trend has just kept going up, up, up. So it just shows that the rest of the S&P 500, when you reduce the amount of tech allocations to an equal weight, yeah, the market is strong. I, I was amazed when I saw this. The NASDAQ has an equal weight index also. Where is it? Well, I can't find it. But um, that you can use that to track as well. The other thing going on has been bonds. Well, bond yields keep going up, aka TLT prices keep going down. But if the market's starting to have a box breakout, then I'd say that that bond issues are handled. And frankly, we're not going to worry about bond issues going forward. The other strong area is energy, XLE. Yeah, that trend keeps going up. XLF is another one for financials. That trend keeps going up. Yeah, what's sell off? So if you're looking for ideas, you want to look for stuff that's not necessarily in technology. All right, let's look at some individual charts that are doing really strong, which also shows the strong market. <laughs> BA. How many people were buying Boeing uh, last few days? Boeing, as you can see, the pattern, Darvis box breakout on big green volume. Yeah, what, what downtrend? Uh, DKNG, Darvis Box Breakout on Big Green Volume. GoPro, Darvis Box Breakout on Big Green Volume. LC, Darvis Box Breakout on Big Green Volume. How many times do I got to say this? These would not be happening if the market was horrible. What you are getting to see if the market's horrible is like a sell off on Oracle. You know, that reported earnings, yeah, they're not so impressed. Okay. Um, stuff like that. But from the other names I just mentioned, yeah, you can see strong market. But you just got to look in the right places for it. If you're waiting for that tech company to come back and do that, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, some other names that are doing pretty good that caught my eye. And, and usually when I talk about stocks, it's just stuff like that catches my eye. I may or may not own some, you know, it all depends. But here's stuff that looks very positive to me on this on this list on the side. In fact, there's too many to, to go through, but let's look at a few that popped up. When things go crazy, I, in my opinion, I think the thing to look for is, did it have big green volume? If it did, then give it some time to look at. If it did not, then you shouldn't be wasting time on it. Apps is one here that's still in its box. It's been it's been wild. I mean, look at it. It went from 100 down to 62 in like 
five days. I mean, that's insane. But on the weekly chart, you can see it attracted buyers and a big green volume bar. So that one's got a lot of potential going forward. Pen, yeah, didn't get big green volume, but it's poked its head above the Darvis box. And it's being added to the S&P 500, so it might get the big volume next week. Mary, this is a medical device company. Uh, look at it. It had reported earnings this past week. The market liked it. Big green volume bar. So if this one breaks out of its box, yeah, I'll, I'll, I might consider buying some. One more for the big green volume, SI. So SIs have been a wild ride going from 170 all the way down to 90. Uh, buckle your seatbelt on that. But this past week on the recovery, big green volume week. So people may have gotten roller coastered on it, but in the end, they want to buy it. All right, let's look at a few that did really bad last week, but had a nice rebound. Net. So net is one, and I saw this pattern a bunch. So last week, I was very alarmed because a lot of stocks were breaking downwards from boxes on big red volume. This is something why I want to keep track of this stuff is because net this past week rebounded back into the box on big green volume, above average green volume. That's very positive. It means they realize that yeah, we were throwing it away last week, but maybe we made a mistake and we should buy it back. That's all I'm saying. NVIDIA, same pattern. Broke downwards out of the box on big red volume, back into the box on above average green volume. That's very positive. It means they're realizing maybe we shouldn't have thrown it away. NVTA, broke downwards on red volume, back into its box range on big green volume. Doesn't mean buy it right away because you don't know if it'll fail again. It means keep an eye on it. One more TTD. Same pattern, broke downwards from its box on big red volume, rebounded back into the box range on above average green volume. Those are the ones to keep an eye on for the future. Doesn't mean buy them all, but just, just uh, Maybe stash them on a watch list somewhere. And then there were tech stocks which did not rebound into the box or did not have big green volume. And that just reinforces stay away from them. Apple. Yeah, broke downwards. Just been sort of futzing around, did nothing. AMD, same deal. Broke downwards. Didn't have all that strong a rebound. Eh. Not interested. Coop broke downwards from its box last week and instead kept going down with more big red volume. That is in a void. You should not be in this one. Uh, you may love Coop, so, you know, you may love it, but right now it's going nowhere. ESTC broke downwards two weeks ago and it's been nothing but red selling ever since. That's in a void. Uh, Peloton, everybody's favorite. Well, it broke downwards out of its box two weeks ago. And since then has really not done anything. Yeah, that's another one. Qualcomm, I love you for 5G. But again, broke downwards, it's doing nothing. That one's going to take a lot of time. Yeah, T-Doc, yeah, you just went down, unfortunately. Oh, Tesla. Tesla, uh, when I mentioned last week that it... it it broke downwards. I got a lot of hate mail, but that's, a, that's okay. I kind of laughed. That was funny. But um, broke downwards from its box. A couple of weeks of big red selling. Had a rebound that got people excited, but you know the rebound did have green volume, but it's still far from its box range, and it's not even a back above its weekly moving average that I use. So not very exciting. ZM, one more. Broke downwards from the box last week and didn't have much of a re rebound this way. So you can see technology, this area, all the names we you know, heard about, yeah, they're just not doing anything. So those are avoids. Stick to the new stuff. 
the new reopening stuff, stuff that's non-tech, and I'm sure that uh, the odds of making money are much higher on those. All right, so that's all I got. Have a great weekend and a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye.